It appears that there's a pandemic of ADHD. And although you can't catch it, this behavioral condition seems to be spreading like wildfire all over the globe. Just like a disease. It's infectious. Yeah. There's got to be a reason for that. So why? <laughs> well, what's going on? We are going to be reporting on the marketing of ADHD by drug company lobbyists who've influenced many countries all over the globe to relax marketing restrictions on stimulant drugs like Ritalin and Concerta for ADHD. Doesn't that make sense? If you want to sell more drug, advertise it because people believe advertising. Right? But it's not just advertising. It's like cutting out the medical testing that proves that this is what the children have. Well, in actuality... The medical testing never did occur. We didn't do spec scans and functional MRIs, and we didn't look at the metabolic things that we're going to get into uh, in this talk a little later that absolutely should be done for every child who's diagnosed with ADD or ADHD. You're right. Well, medical testing is no longer being required to diagnose this attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and it's usually diagnosed just by proclamation, usually by the parents and the teacher. Sure. <laughs> and ADD and ADHD are big business for big pharma. Absolutely. And they're relaxing the, the restrictions, okay, or the diagnostic, diagnostic criteria. And then people are going to the Internet, and they're trying to get information off the Internet, and a lot of it is published by who? The people who are selling the drugs. And, of course, they're going to make it look like it's what they should be doing. Well, see, most people think <clears throat> that the only symptoms are, are like not concentrating and being hyperactive, not paying, not paying attention, maybe being a little fidgety, which could also be symptoms of other things. Besides like many other things, <laughs> like a, the vast majority of other things, like dysfunctional families or bullying or other kinds of problems that kids are having that are emotionally stressful. You bet. And then it gets lumped into one category. But let's talk about what some of the physical symptoms are that can go that do go along with this that people need to be aware of because it's, it, everybody seems to be just ignoring that. Exactly. They're not even looking at those things, Vicki. You're right. And what those things are, things like dyslexia. If you transpose numbers or letters, uh, or if you have dyspraxia, which means your coordination is not so good, or if you have dry skin and concentrated urine because one of the things in ADHD is a metabolic defect that has to do with essential fatty acids, and those essential fatty acids are responsible for the waterproofing of the skin. So all those things and go in the package. night blindness is another Night thing. blindness is another one, absolutely. So you're looking at a whole paradigm here, a whole system that's involved with this thing that's called ADD or ADHD that's often overlooked. And the sad part about a lot of this is that there's a metabolic default, a defect in a lot of children who have this disorder. David Horobin, who published probably in the range of 2,000 papers on essential fatty acids, probably the world's leading expert in that, studied this and published uh, some work on the metabolic defects that are there. And basically what happens is even if you eat the foods, uh, the seeds and nuts, the, uh, like the flaxseed oil, and you take in those, those precursors of what the essential fatty acids are converted in the body into... If you can't, don't have the enzymes because of a metabolic defect, then you're not going to be able to convert what you eat into what your body needs. So you won't have that EPA or DHA or GLA or arachidonic acid, which is what actually causes the defects that you see in ADD in a lot of, a lot of children. So this is why it's important for children that have ADD or ADHD to be taking essential fatty acids. Right, and there are some products that are wonderful for this. Things like Effelex, which is made by a company called Effemol, and no, we don't have any stock in those companies, uh, that are very effective for a lot of kids. And you could give it to them for about three months and see if there's a change. And if there is, voila, then you don't have to be talking about using things that are stimulants, you know, that, are mo that come from dexedrine and, ha and make you, I mean, that are problems in themselves. Well, you have a patient that's our mm. age that's been on it forever. Since he was he, a child. Because he's addicted to it. He tries to get off of it. He has no chance because he just goes to sleep for the day. He says, I can't function like that. I'll just, and he's got atrial fibrillation, okay, which is a heart rhythm disturbance that's related to that as well. So it's not like this is innocuous. Some people even have seizures from it. Wow. So it's, it's, I mean, it's, these drugs are big business and the companies don't care. 
And well, you know, by not requiring the tests for the diagnosis is just making it easier to sell the drugs. Absolutely. And that's what a lot of this just comes right down to. So it's really good to educate yourself about this and to be aware of it and to know about it. Exactly. So that if somebody suggests that your child might have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or the ADD, that you can go to the doctor and ask to have these tests done, like this functional MRI and the spec scan, spec scan. and the essential fatty acids. Exactly. If, if, if we had somebody in the family that had that problem, we would insist that those tests be done rather than expose them to these drugs for long periods of time. It's the easy way out. And there's a lot of, uh, of what happens in this situation is related to the drug company's ability to convince doctors and parents that these drugs are the answer. Well, what we're doing is we're medicalizing behaviors. Exactly. Let's go after the cause. ADD and ADHD are symptoms. They are not a diagnosis by themselves. And until we're sure that that's what we're dealing with, let's not be get, getting carried away and putting 5% of the population of our kids on these drugs.